So the new Adobe Express, you can sign up for this for free. So right here's a button, click start for free. I'm gonna click it. For the free account, it's gonna want me to sign up with one of these methods. This inner class code has nothing to do with our school as well as this login with school account since the school does not provide access to this. But remember, you can complete the course projects with the free account. And again, Adobe Creative Cloud Express, also known as Adobe Express, can be used for free. If you want to use it for free, sign up with just your email, just so they know who you are. They'll probably assign you some kind of Adobe ID number or something. But if you're paying for the photographer's plan, like the monthly $9.99 a month photographer's plan, or the whole Adobe Creative Cloud plan with all the other softwares like Illustrator and Design, which again, if you're a digital photography major, you don't need that. You can go ahead and log in with your Adobe ID because it's included with the photographer's plan now, which will give you many more branding options as you work on projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in right now. So I've now logged in and essentially all you have to do, there's so many things that you can explore and have a good time with. But for pretty much all of the photography projects, unless there's an additional video somewhere that tells you to do something different, all I want you to do is click on this big plus icon right here and just go down to web page and select it. And again, you see all the actions that you can do. It, this does so many things. But again, just click web page. It's going to load a blank, generic, scrollable web page. I have a gray area where you should always upload your background image. It maybe it's an image from your project that you're submitting. Maybe it's just another image. Maybe it's just the colors and design but never leave this gray. I mean, this is your professional approach to creative image making. So you always wanna make it stand out. Add your title, add a subtitle, and then you add your images and text. So let's go ahead and go through the process. So first, well, actually, I, first I need to open up Bridge. Wait, there's a bonus tip. Yes. Here are my images. And as I look at them, look over here. My images have not been resized yet. Remember, you don't need to upload anything larger than full HD. That is plenty of size to view online. And all of this will be just online grading. So you never need to upload these giant original files out of your camera. And it looks like all of these, that's 4,500 pixels by 3,000 pixels. All of these are just giant. So let's quickly resize. I'll select the first one, hold the shift key, select the last one. I'll go up here to tools and down to Photoshop, image processor. And very quickly, I'll say, I don't want anything to be bigger than 1920 on either dimension. Now that's not gonna make it a square. It's just going to say, hey, if it's a landscape image, it won't be longer than 1920 pixels. If it's a vertical portrait image, it won't be longer than this. If it happens to be a square, well, then it will make it an exact square. We will keep the quality at 12 and we're going to convert the profile to sRGB, which is something you always want to do if you're uploading it to the web. So I'm going to hit run. It's going to resize all of these automatically for me in Photoshop, which is awesome. And these are big files, but it's already done. And it's going to put them in a folder named JPEG. So now when I click in here and I click on one of these, see the longest dimension is 1920. Here's a landscape. Now the width is 1920. See how that works? And also, while we're doing it, look at that. They're not named very nicely. So I'm gonna go ahead and select them all. Tools, I'm just gonna hit batch rename and I'm going to just type in Photoshop Professor. I don't want the current file name. Maybe I'll do a sequence number of three digits and it shows me right down here what it's gonna be renamed as. I'll hit rename, renamed in the same folder. So everything's been resized and renamed that quickly. So I'll pop back to Adobe Express. And I'm going to say, let's add a photo. And I'm going to choose upload photo because I need to upload one of my own photos, right? When I choose upload photo, it's going to take me to my hard drive and I'm going to navigate to Adobe Express. Now notice where we're at. These are the original photos, right? Here's the JPEG files and here they are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to select the, I can't command click and select multiples, right? Because you can only put one image in the background. So I'm just going to choose upload. Now I don't like how it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click focal point and I'm gonna drag this around to where it looks better and click. That way I can see more of what's going on. And I'll choose save in the upper right corner, title. And here's the weird part. You wanna keep double clicking. So this will auto delete and you'll just have a blinking cursor, but it doesn't work like that. Just click in the area and just type in whatever it is that your title is, whether it's project one, et cetera, frog magic. And probably subtitle would be your name. You don't get to choose the font or the capitalization or anything, which is fine. 
I can either load photos individually in a photo grid, a glide show, or split layout. Just for simplicity, I'm going to choose photo grid. I've got to go upload the photo, which means I've got to go back and find the photo. And now I can shift click on the bottom and upload every single photo at once. It's going to automatically build the grid for me. And I'm going to hit command minus so I can see a little more. And here's the photo grid as it's already auto loaded for me. So I thought I didn't actually show you how to move your images around if you didn't like their placement in the grid. The stuff is pretty intuitive, but essentially I'm just going to click on an image. It's going to pop up. I get to choose to edit the grid or delete something. So I'm going to choose edit grid. And so once the grid pops up, see how there's a blue highlight and I get choices? Like, let's say I, I like this frog, but I think aesthetically it should be on this side. Well, then I would just hit this move backward arrow and see how that looks more balanced. And I like that a lot better. And then let's say this image all the way up here. That means I'd have to select it and move it backwards and then have to come and move it backwards again. And then I'd have to come in and move it backwards again if I wanted it in between these. So you see how you have to just keep moving it forward or backwards. And then if you said, I like this image, this is like the one of the, the best looking images, or actually, actually, I think this one's one of the better looking images. I could hit this large photo and it's going to give it more dominance in the grid. Do you see how that works? So that's kind of a neat idea in case you have like four images that you've made for a composite. And these are the four befores. And then here's your big composite. That's a good way to load that into a grid if you're in a class where you're doing something like that. Most of your stuff will be either in Photoshop classes. It'll be templates with your personal images. And then so your template, you could make a big, make it a big image like this. For your personal images, always do a before and after which I'll talk about just in another minute or two in this video. Anyway, I hope this helps. Now, obviously, I've got some behind the scenes pictures, so that's kind of neat. And then here's some black and white conversions side by side. And when I look at this one, I don't think it fits, so I'm going to hit delete and get rid of it. I like that, so I'm just going to hit save. Now, here's the issue. Everything now is 100% all locked together. Now, what if I wanted all my before and afters to be at the bottom and with an explanation. So I'd have to go in and hit edit grid and I'd say, okay, all of the ones that are before and afters I want to get rid of, right? So all of these I'm going to click on and then click on the little delete trash can. I'm going to click save. You could click add a caption behind the scenes and then just scroll down and this will populate again. I'll hit photo grid and this time I'll just go grab two photos. And this is why I love Bridge so much is because the file browser in your system, whether it's Mac or Windows, tends to make these little icons small. You can make them a tiny bit bigger, but they're not much bigger. But I can see I'm going to choose this and this. So I, choose, I chose the before and after color versions. I'll hit save. So now it's going to put them in a grid side by side. And what I'll do just for efficiency is I'll come back to Photo Grid, click Upload Photo. I'll find my other before and after, click Upload, click Save. So it'll load those together. And then I'll go ahead and load one more photo grid, upload photo, and I will choose this one, click save. And I'll go ahead and do the last one, photo grid, upload photo. Now, if you didn't have a before and after, you wouldn't be worrying about the photo grid. You would just choose the first option, which is just photo. Click save. And so, see, now I can go back through and I'm like, okay, here's all the behind the scenes all together in a grid, right? And it's labeled. And here I can name it what's going on. I can name it the technique I was trying to capture, like frozen action or diffuse lighting, kind of whatever it is that you were trying to capture for the project assignment. And then I can actually click this plus icon, hit text. And then this is where I would go in and explain a bunch of stuff, kind of talking about what it is I was trying to do. Uh, typically, a lot of the projects and a lot of the classes ask you very pointed questions that you must answer that are a part of your grade. So make sure you answer those. And then when you're done, you just be done and go down and add more text. And just scroll down. And when you want to take a quick peek at it, just hit preview up at the top. And it's going to build this on Adobe's website that will forever host. So here's my frog magic. I'll see now what everybody else sees behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Look at that. Then I'll see my party time. And remember, anybody with this link can click on any of the images and see it at the fullest resolution you've uploaded it to. So this is full HD. So they can see the entire image. Like, And then you can like, oh, I really like that. 
and then you have arrows to scroll back and forth if you're on a photo grid. So then I say, I, I want to share this. I'm going to X out and I'm going to say, let's share this. So click the share button. Then you click publish and share link. Now, here's the thing. You can pick a category to, to put it in, but you don't have to. You can ignore that if you want. Since this is for a class project, I recommend that you just keep this anonymous. And by anonymous, I mean you don't share it with the world. You're just sharing the link with your classmates and your instructor. So if, if you wanted to, you could toggle this on. You could name it. You could add all rights reserved and put the current year. And that's fine. But if you just leave this toggled off, what's going to happen is it's not going to show your name with anyone. And then you can choose create link. And now pretty much ignore the Facebook, Twitter, Teams, email, all that stuff. Classroom has nothing to do with us. That's some third party proprietary software that I think you have to pay for. You're going to either copy the shareable link right here by just by clicking copy. Or if you know a little bit about HTML, you can actually grab the embed code to embed it in a website. But I'm just going to click copy. It's already copied. I can exit out of it. And now I'll open up a Word doc because it has the same functionality as, say, sending an email. So when I type here, look at this and hit command V to paste. Right now, this is not a functioning activated link. And basically, it's going to make everybody mad if you send them this because they can't click it and view it because it's not activated. You have to actually go and copy it. You have to open your browser. Then you've got to paste it, hit enter. Like you're creating a lot more work for people that you just want to share work with in the email, in a Word document. And as we're uploading these projects in our Blackboard system, after you've hit Command V, or again, that would be Control V if you're on a Windows machine, just hit Enter and it auto activates. You'll see it change colors to blue. You'll see an underline go around it and you'll see how this changes when I hover over it. And if I were to right click on it, I could go down to hyperlink and I could edit the hyperlink. And you can see it's actually going to a website. That's how you activate a link. And that's all you do. That's how easy it is. I hope this has helped.